Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today's pick a card reading is going to be about you and your person and it's a you and them reading. So current energy and what's happening, potential outcome, and just, you know, some general information about what's going on between you. Um, yeah, thank you again for everyone who's booking personal readings. I do have availability next week. You can email me. The email is in the description box below. Thank you to all of you who like and subscribe and watch my videos and send me messages. I love you all. I will say I don't want to give anybody who's leaving negative comments any kind of attention, but I will say that I don't really like the negative energy and it really brings the vibration down and it brings your vibration down. So if you're thinking about making a negative comment in my comment section, I'm probably going to remove it because, again, it just brings the energy down and there's really no need for it. So thank you to all of those who leave beautiful comments and help inspire and encourage others in my comment section. I really appreciate it and I'm sending you guys lots of love and light. So yeah, we'll get into this reading. So for today we have three piles. Pile one, we have the Opal Heart and the Santa Muerta Tarot. For pile number two, we have the Unfolding Path Tarot and this green fluorite heart. And for pile number three, we have this Lepetalite heart with the price tag on. Oh look, Death and Rebirth. It's 13, Death and Rebirth. Maybe that's a sign. Pile three. Sorry, I'll get to it in pile three. I shouldn't even be doing this right now. This is what I did in pile three yesterday. I took stickers off my... <laughs> All right, anyway. Pile three is the Lipidolite Heart. And this is the Anime Tarot. So if you need a moment to sit with the energy, please feel free to pause it and I will see you at your pile. Hello, pile one, and welcome to your reading. If you chose this Opal Heart and the Santa Muerta Tarot. This is going to be a reading about what's going on in your connection. So please only take what resonates. Before we get into the tarot, I am going to get cards, oracle cards, to check the energy. So we have the shadow, and this is meant to be your person's energy. That's how I drew them. But take it as it resonates, it could be mirrored. We have Emperor, Do I want it like that or do I want it like that? I think I want it like that. For your energy, we have the one. We have the six of acorns, which is the six of wands. <laughs> this deck always confuses me. Let's just make some room. And for the connecting energy, we have transformation. Beautiful. So I will say that right away, well, those cards kind of fit. I will say right away that there is transformations taking place in this connection, even if you can't see them. It's interesting because for a lot of you, I feel like you are, well, we'll see what the tarot says, but intuitively, I feel like on this side, you're working on yourself, you're working on your solar plexus. So even if you're not actually working on your solar plexus chakra, um, whatever you're doing in your life is raising your, is opening that solar plexus. And it very much is, it's your self-esteem. It's a feeling that you can accomplish things and you are worthy of things. Now on your person's side, we see the blue wing. And to me, that talks about the throat chakra. So your person seems to be going through some things here. They could be holding back communication. It could be, you know, it could be that the ball is in their court to make communication here. I'm sorry if it's a little dark. It's very cloudy today. So, very interesting. Look at that. We have the Emperor. 
the Emperor twice. So I will say when I first pulled this card and then this card, I was feeling Twin Flames because we had the Emperor, we have the Shadow, which is looks like a mirror. We have the Butterfly, which also looks like a mirror. And now we have the Emperor on the bottom of the deck. So this should be interesting. So I'm gonna shuffle the cards. So spirit, this is going to be a reading about the viewer and their person, what's happening, what energy, I guess it's an energy check-in. One more time, eight of wands, forward movement. All right, so let's see what's happening here. Get out my piece of paper to keep me on track. There we go. All right, spirit. Let's go current energy. Oh, I see a card flipped over there. What card is that? Is that the death card? Very interesting. Well, you could be going through a rebirth right now. That flipped out though when, uh, not when I was shuffling, so. Current situation. That was underneath the emperor and that was on the bottom of the deck when I started. That's very interesting. So current energy, we have temperance. Oh my goodness, this is what's helping or harming the connection. Okay, all right, okay. <laughs> what is going on here, pile one? Pile one, <laughs> what did you do? This is very interesting energy. So far we have, we have Gemini energy. We have some fire, water. Let's keep going. What are your current thoughts and feelings? Your current thoughts and feelings. Your current thoughts and feelings. We have the emperor, oh my gosh. <gasps> your current thoughts and feelings. Can we please get another card? This is very interesting, very, very interesting. Show me their person's thoughts and feelings, current energy. What energy is their person in? What energy is their person in, please, spirit? The sun. Oh my. This is definitely twin flames, this one. Pretty sure. Take it if it resonates. This is very interesting. Can I get another card for their person's energy? Okay. That one went to the floor. Seven of Pentacles. Let's get into these cards. This is, well, first of all, let's look at all the people we have here. <laughs> so like I was saying, we have Aries energy with the Emperor. We do have some fire energy. So uh, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, Temperance, is Sagittarius, the Fool, Air Signs, Libra, Gemini, Aquarius, the Lovers is Gemini, the sun is Leo and also divine masculine. We have two cards about divine masculine here. This is very interesting. 
We also have one, two, three, four, five, six major arcana cards. Six major arcana cards. All right, so let's talk about this energy. So I feel right now there is a transformation going on between you and your person. We have this transformation card. I'm not sure if you're talking to this person or not because... Current energy is temperance, so it is balance. So for some of you, I feel like you are talking to this person. You could resonate with Twin Flames and you could just be... Again, I've been picking up a lot of energy of counterparts who are just starting to talk again, starting to find their way again. So that could be this pile. For some of you, you could not even be in contact with this person but there is definitely movement. Um, what's really interesting is that for some of you, I do feel like you're with this person. I feel like you have seen a change in this person and you're giving this person a chance possibly with temperance that is an energy of healing and balance. And for what's helping and harming the connection, helping or harming, blocks or challenges we have the lovers and the fool so for some of you it could be what's blocking this connection is just one of you taking a leap of faith towards this new beginning with each other this is a soul bond we have the lovers energy possibly again one of you has to make a choice the lovers is about a choice so what could be blocking it is that you aren't you haven't made that leap of faith yet towards this person or they haven't made it towards you or you're talking, but you're, you know, there's this energy of holding back. We see this locked heart here. So it's possible that what's blocking it is the fear of, can we trust this? Have, have you changed? Have you really done the shadow work? Because the energy that I'm feeling is that you have done shadow work and that this person is catching up. Now, I do see this person is very focused on this connection, whether or not you're together. They're focused on it. And they're focused on being a more stable person for you. We do have... Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. I wanted to say the other interpretation of this card because for some of you... This is what's helping your connection. So for some of you, take it as it resonates. You could already be together or you could be talking. I do believe this is a soul connection. So I don't, I don't think this is someone that you've just met. I mean, I, I don't feel like it's someone, this doesn't feel like a new connection with all these major arcana cards the healing, the shadow work, the transformation. I really do feel like this is about a connection that has been through transformations and that both of you have had to change. So what could be helping this if you are together or talking? It could be that you're both finally ready to, because again, this is what could be helping the connection. So it could be that you are both ready to choose this, that there has been balance restored. There's been enough shadow work done where spirit has taken you out of hanged man mode. We have temperance. And, you know, there's lots in these cards about transformations happening. And for some of you, what's helping this connection is that you're trusting in those. You're trusting that this person has changed. You're trusting in this leap of faith. You're trusting in this new beginning. You're putting your trust into this person with, you know, the key to your heart. I do feel like a lot of you could rep uh, represent, resonate with twin flames because we have the one, which is about one love, and we have the shadow. And it's just very mirrory, you know? Your person's coming out in divine masculine energy. So again, it's hard for me to say, I really don't like to assume if you're together or not. So please don't take any offense to assumptions that I sound like I'm making. <laughs> but for some of you, 
I already know that you understand the importance of this connection. You feel it. Again, I feel like this person put you through a lot. We have the Seven of Pentacles here, which makes me believe that there was a period of time where you were both working on yourselves and this person was failing to, you know, you could have not been seeing the results you wanted out of this connection and maybe there was a separation. I do see that you are in a place of acceptance about this connection. I believe that you are trying to trust in the healing that's taken place here. For some of you with that six of acorns, the six of wands, you are focused on making this work. You're focused on celebrating the small moments of success within this connection. You're celebrate, you're focused on, you know, the Six of Wands is a very, it's a triumphant card. So for some of you, you could be feeling like all your hard work paid off, I'm hearing. For others of you that aren't in communication with this person, with the Six of Acorns, success and triumph, you could be very focused on yourself right now because you realize your person needs to change. They have shadows. And that all you can do is work on yourself and raise your own vibration and that's what you're doing with that six of acorns. I do want to say for some of you that are focusing on yourself and aren't in contact, or even if you are in contact and focusing on yourself, we do see that energy. We see that, that animal heading that way and this animal like, hey, wait a minute, wait for me. Something has happened in this person's life to, or in this connection to really make them step into that emperor energy and that divine masculine energy. Again, this person has been examining their shadows and doing shadow work. And just like you feel this connection, you feel this one love, this one, you know, that you're one soul in two bodies, I'm hearing. You're already in a place of knowing this, and now that's where they're coming into. They're starting to realize this intense love. And for a lot of you, I feel like you were a catalyst in this person's healing journey. Now, this person is very focused on this. This is very, right now, this is very important to them, this connection and coming in right. And if this person hasn't taken action, they want to take action. We do see the Divine Masculine here. And I do feel this person is focused on this connection right now. So yeah, the current energy is that of healing. It's that of transformation. And for your energy, we have your thoughts, feelings, energies regarding the situation. I do see there has been... There's been, you know, a moment of rest here where, again, this could be in the far past where you had a separation and now you're talking again, or it could be right now you're experiencing a retreat from this person or you're retreating your energy, but there is a renewal here. I do believe that you see this person's potential to change. Maybe you don't see it, but you deep down believe in it. You deep down intuitively believe that they can change. Maybe you haven't seen them change yet. With this Emperor card, you could be, you know, you could be thinking, when is this Emperor going to come in? When are they going to take action? I think that you are working on healing too. It's interesting because these four candles, this is the Four of Swords. But it's very interesting how that one candle is lit because it's a very strong message for me that you still, you know, you still hold on hope for this person. You still believe that they can heal. And Four of Swords is a very healing energy. I believe... Maybe for some of you with this emperor energy, maybe you 
are feeling like you want to take action towards this person. Because if they're looking at their shadows and you're in no communication and they're healing and you have this lover's bond, you're going to energetically feel pulled to communicate with them. You're going to feel pulled to send them a song or a message, make contact. Um, in the past, in my connection, there were times where I felt in no contact. I felt a very strong urge to reach out. Afterwards, I found out those strong urges were because the person was experiencing a tower moment or something in their life where they needed energetic support and I was picking up on that. So you could feel like taking action here with that emperor card. Or if you are with this person, you could feel like this person is finally, finally stepping into their emperor energy. And they're taking, maybe they're taking accountability for the healing that they needed to do. For your person's energy, <clears throat> we have the sun and the seven of pentacles. So your person... You know, if you're not together, they're thinking about this. They're, that's divine masculine energy. And they're thinking about... The sun is a very positive energy. It's a very magical, alluring energy. It's a very happy energy. So this this person, again, feels this connection with you. They feel drawn to you. They love your light. They love your spirit. Your soul, I'm hearing, especially Twin Flame, you can't cut that bond. And I feel like they didn't show you enough in the past. Like, they were very slow here. I feel like this is a slow-moving masculine. And that, you know, this person sees the potential here with you. They see the long-term investment. Seven of Pentacles is about long-term investment. And I believe that they see the potential here with you. For some of you, I do get the feeling that you're, you're focused on yourself right now. Even if you are talking to this person, you could be focused on your job, your spirituality, your friends, raising your vibration. Maybe you're learning the lesson, like you really have to love yourself before somebody else can... You have to be enough for yourself before someone else can be enough for you, is what I'm hearing. Shall we look at next actions? Like, I don't know if you're with this person or not, but I'm just, I'm a little curious about what's coming next. So let's look at what's coming next. That can be action. What's coming next for these two? What's coming next for these two? What's coming next? Cards keep wanting to flip out, but they're not coming. Just like a Divine Masculine, hey? <laughs> uh, just kidding. Just kidding, my Divine Masculines. Little twin flame humor. <laughs> so we have the Ten of Wands. Sorry, the Ten of Swords, the High Priestess, and Strength. So this is interesting for what's coming next because... For a lot of you, I feel like there's an ending to the way this relationship used to be, or you're, if you're not in contact, I think that this person is going through an ego death, a shedding of those shadows. They're shedding those shadows. We have the high priestess, so, you know, I believe that intuitively, you know the importance of this connection. And I see this bond between you strengthening. We have strength, Leo energy, and we have the high priestess. And I do see old patterns falling away here and this connection becoming even stronger. With the strength card, it really does make me think of the connection between counterparts because it's unbreakable. And you show yourselves or you show each other sometimes the worst version of yourself, the most unhealed shadowy side. And it can be like you're dealing with 
Like just with my own shadows, I feel like I'm dealing with that beast. I'm trying to wrestle that lion inside of me. And I do feel what's coming next is a strengthening of this connection, a strengthening of this bond. For some of you, you could be very close to, I'm not saying marriage, but taking the next step to committing to this journey. For others of you, you're going to come back together here and strengthen the spiritual bond. I do believe that you and this person communicate telepathically. I do feel a very intense spiritual bond here, which means you feel their energy, they feel yours. You think about them, they think about you. You heal, they heal. Again, the masculine is slower to do all those things, and it's the feminine that leads the way. I didn't make the rules. It's just the way it is. I didn't make the rules. I'm not saying that feminines should be the leaders, but energetically they are. And yeah. Can we see the potential outcome? That one was, oh, <laughs> guys, guys. That one flew out and underneath, I see the two of pentacles, but I also, I wanna take this card because this card was poking out very far and I think I know what card it is. Intuitively, I think I know this is a newer to me deck. So let's just see. It's exactly what I thought it was. <gasps> what? <gasps> um. That's crazy business. <laughs> That's crazy business. Oh my gosh. Potential outcome. Get ready. <laughs> Guys, look, potential outcome, two of cups. A mutual relationship of love and trust, soul bond, exchanging of energies, exchanging of emotions, sharing your emotions, trusting each other. This is beautiful. And look at that connection. Like how that water, they're connected by water. They're connected by emotion. And we had the two of, right underneath the deck was the two of pentacles. And this is a very beautiful card. It's one of my favorite two of pentacles cards because we see mirrored transformation. Like we see these two souls both having transformed, meeting eye to eye. We see them exchanging a green stone, which is, you know, I know that the Two of Pentacles is about stability and finances, things like that. But that green is also, I just saw a blue jay if that's significant to anyone. I just saw two blue jays if that's significant to anyone. I don't normally see blue jays, so very interesting. You know what? I'm going to look that up. <laughs> I, I really enjoy looking things up during readings now. Um, so you have, actually what's interesting is you have the Two of Cups, the Two of Pentacles, and then I saw two Blue Jays. So just hang on a sec here. Two, two, two. The time has come for you to be more self-reflective and focused on the duality of situations. The energy of the number two is also associated with the moon, which means two, two, two also calls for the person to be more open, expressive, and vulnerable. And again, that's what we see. I was saying, we see that green stone. It's like they're being vulnerable and it's heart chakra energy. They're exchanging emotions. They're exchanging a connection here and look at that mirrored energy again this is one of my favorite two of pentacles cards and we see these two people are no longer juggling they're seeing eye to eye they're completely in tune with each other like i don't know that's a gorgeous card i love that card now really quick i wanted to look up blue jay because i've never seen a blue jay while i've been doing a reading 
The blue jay symbolizes loyalty, devotion, faithfulness, awareness, intuition, and bold expression, and also trickery. But let's not hate on the blue jays. <laughs> let's not hate on masculines. <laughs> All right, so again, such beautiful energy. Look at that. That is just, it's everything. And the one that I saw sticking out, I just saw all this red and spirit was like, take it, take that card. And I thought it was about movement. And this is forward movement. This is communication, forward movement, progressing together, eye to eye. Forward progression, eye to eye, balanced transformed there's so much about balance here and the reason i was like what is going on is because we had the world and then the ten of cups and the ten of pentacles so major cycle coming to an end here major major cycle coming to an end and a new beginning emotional fulfillment financial abundance i am going to look up 10 10 we also have the star on the bottom, Aquarius energy. So let's look up 1010. For those of you who don't like to know what these things mean, fast forward. Because one of my, one of the lessons that I learned on my journey is that the more you look things up, the more synchronicity spirit will send you. So in a way I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to increase the signs that you're getting because you're going to start to pick up on these things. I know that most of you already do. And that's why I love you. I love all the people who are in my comment section, like talking about what time they watched it and what the date is. I love it. I eat that up. <laughs> so 1010 strong message from your guardian angels that it's time for a change in your life. Perhaps listen to this. You guys, this came out in a personal reading just like 20 minutes ago that I did. These two cards in a different deck came out. Perhaps you've been manifesting enlightenment, abundance, love, or a twin flame reunion. Okay? Twin flame reunion, it says. Expect miraculous changes ahead. Your angels are with you. And if we want to go back and take out the third ten. Look at, all, look at the butterflies. Oh my gosh. That is so much transformation here. I'm all excited and giddy. Angel number 10, 10, 10 is a sign of completion of karmic hardships. It also talks about staying focused on your goals. The suffering and the hard times you've been struggling with are about to end. Again, this is about a cycle coming to an end. And why I was shocked was because it came out. 10 world 10 like the world was right in between that so i really do feel the end of a cycle here between the two of you and a brand new beginning a brand new beginning it's so beautiful it's so beautiful i knew this was going to be a good pile <laughs> when my favorite card that card came out i was like oh this is going to be good <laughs> this is going to be the good stuff all right so let's get you some more oracle cards for now, I'm just going to put these over here. I won't put those away right now. All right, let's get you some oracle cards. Let's do this one. What can you tell us about what's coming in this connection? What do we need to know about this connection spirit? Yeah, 10 what is going on you guys come on i want to scream like do you hear me trying to quiet my voice because i'm not trying to scare my children what is going on <laughs> what is with all these tens oh my gosh guys i want to be in pile one <laughs> i want to be going through this. This is beautiful. Oh, come on. What page is this on? I'm so horrible at... <laughs> there we go. 
Rebirth, second chances, new opportunities. I'm going to read this card to you. I'm sorry if I sound very happy, but I am. <laughs> uh, shall we do, well, let's do, we'll do the Oracle message and then we'll do the romance one too. Second chances are available to you now. Whatever opportunities you thought were dead are now revived in a more authentic, stronger form. Whatever you may have perceived as a failure or a loss is now being replaced by something bigger and more powerful growing in its place. This rebirth is assured. Step into your new life. Destiny is being fulfilled in wondrous ways. And how many times have we had the 10 in your reading, which is all about destiny? I'm not yelling at you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm yelling at the, the people who don't believe in this. <laughs> I feel like, well, I'm not even yelling, but I just, I said to someone this morning, why doesn't everybody get spiritually awakened? <laughs> it's so wonderful. This world is based on connections and relationships. No matter what loss has occurred in the past or even now, death and endings are only, death and endings are only illusions. There is life after death, love after loss. And in this moment, you are radiating the regenerative life force energy that makes you irresistible. Why am I so giddy? <sighs> irresistible to love in all forms. Now is the time when you will see evidence of this new emergence. Can you feel it? Love is rising up to greet you. <laughs> I'm hearing, can you feel? <laughs> Lion King. Uh, sorry. 28. <laughs> Another 10. <laughs> guys I feel so giddy maybe you're like maybe you and your person are like really vibing right now and you're just full of excitement and giddiness because or your person is I'm just maybe that's how you're gonna feel when they come back in strong foundations a beautiful work in progress <laughs> I'm sorry I'm giggling uh let's go to the romance one <laughs> When you see this card, know that you are attracting new relationships into your life and solidifying the ones you already have. By building them on foundations of honesty, humility, clear communication, and a genuine desire to know each other, you are moving toward laying the groundwork for a relationship with the firm footing that will ensure it can, it can withstand any storm. Long-standing relationships are also repaired and strengthened. You and the other person are stronger, wiser, and more powerful together than apart. Mm, guys. Mm, I'm getting all teary-eyed. I am. If you're if you if you resonate with the twin flame journey, it really is a journey where you both have to choose each other. And it's hard to change those things about yourself that you need to change. And anyway, I just feel very happy for whoever's in this pile. I feel very happy for you. All right, let's see what's coming. Or what message Spirit has about this connection. Sorry for the sign. This is, well, I feel like this person or this connection has caused you a lot of anxiety in the past. And I feel with the shadow cards and the transformation, I do feel this energy of It was also the card that came out in your energy, which was the Four of Swords, which is about healing. I do feel like you're anxious about opening yourself up to this person. I feel like you're anxious about history repeating itself, it going wrong, them betraying you. You could just be very anxious right now that you're not hearing from them. And I just want to send you some love and tell you that one of the lessons that I learned, and I'm still learning, I'm, I'm always learning all these lessons, is that anxiety won't change the outcome. It'll just make you more miserable. And in fact, sometimes anxiety can actually help us manifest the exact same situation because we're constantly worrying that it's going to happen and our thoughts become reality. So when you're dealing with someone who has hurt you in the past and saying they've changed, it is hard to trust in that. And 
there is a feeling of being afraid of the unknown and maybe in the past you thought your person was never capable of doing those things and then you saw the darkest version of your person and now you're scared anyway i just i do want to say that you just you need to follow your intuition trust your intuition try not to let those anxious thoughts fester you know i'm I'm really sending love out to you. I've experienced anxiety my entire life. I still do. Actually, to be honest, since spiritually awakening my anxiety, I'm learning to work with it and to realize that it's not fact. Anxiety is not fact. And anxiety is not truth. It's fear. And it's fear-based thinking. And so... Just try and listen to your intuition and not those programmed thoughts in your head that tell you that you need to be scared or that everything's going to end horribly or that it'll never work. I also want to mention we have the door to spirit, which is the number five, and it's about change. I do believe you and this person have a very important spiritual connection. This door is wide open. I do believe your person has changed or is trying to change just like you have changed. This is a beautiful journey. I didn't mean for this to be a twin flame pile, but it very much feels like a twin flame pile to me. And this journey is about change. And as we change, we come back together. Somebody asked me if twin flames ever come together. Yes, they do. They do. But there is separation and there's learning of lessons. And then there's the choosing of the journey. You come back together, you still trigger each other, but there's an there's an awareness, there's a trust between you, there's, you learn the healthy way to make it through those triggers and to put up boundaries. It's, again, it's not for the faint of heart. It's a, it's an intense journey, one that you have to choose. And sometimes it chooses you and you have, you try and push it away, but you can't. Anyway, I'm going on a rant here now. I will say this does represent union and reunion. We do have that white dove representing um, harmony and reconciliation. Moon cards, please. Moon cards. Meditate and contemplate new moon in Pisces. So if you're anxious, really meditate on it. And I said to someone this morning that meditating isn't what you... Everything they put on TV and we just thought that's the way life was work. Programmed thinking. Meditating. It's not... I always thought to meditate you had to like sit with your legs in a funny way and like ohm and not think about anything and completely detach and that's not actually it at all it's really about listening to yourself in those quiet moments of meditation and you know paying attention to the thoughts you're having and the thoughts that are surfacing anyway something about meditating and contemplating here i find that when i'm feeling anxious and my mind is doing the what if what if what if i meditate and it really grounds me and reminds me that my anxiety is just fear. We have a personal issue reaches resolution. See? The completion of a cycle. And look, work through your fears. We were just talking about that new moon in Scorpio. And you guys, there was a new moon last night. And I don't know about you, but I felt a shift. I felt a shift in the energy. So, yeah. Let's get you, let's get you one of these. Oh, I'm just going to take those two. Now I'm going to take those three. Spirit was like, take the, take the follow your heart one. <laughs> follow your heart. I'm always rewarded when I follow my heart. I trust that the GPS in my heart knows all the best routes. And when it seems like it's taking too long to get where I want, I know it's because there's some cool, weird stuff to see along the way. Again, 
this is a whole journey, these soul connections. And even when you're in separation, you're going to come across things and experiences that elevate your life. And you were meant to come across them for a reason. And you possibly wouldn't have come across them if you were in a perfect relationship with your twin flame. I'm just saying, if if I had been in a perfect relationship with a twin flame, I never would have become a reader. I never would have focused on myself and my own spirituality and my own healing. And it was in times of separation that I would hone my tarot skills. I would, for a while, I was just watching tarot. And then every time I would start to talk to the person, I would stop watching tarot like, oh, we're talking. I don't need guidance anymore, which is foolish of me. Um, and then what would happen? I'd close the door on my spirituality. Not really, but yeah, I'd stop practicing. And then another tower moment, the, a red car just drove by really, really slowly. Um, another, I became stagnant and I would have another tower moment with the person splitting us apart and then I would start getting intuitive thoughts like oh maybe you should start maybe you should start recording readings maybe you should start a tarot tiktok like and I just I listened to those thoughts and every time there was a separation or any time you know there was loss of contact I would just put that energy into myself and I guys I'm telling you at the time it seemed like will this ever end and now looking back it wasn't even it's a journey, but I can look back now and be thankful for the things that I experienced along that journey and still experience. To enjoy something, I simply need to add joy to it. Joy is like butter. I can put it on anything and it'll make it better. Today, I will add joy to everything. Really slather it on. Today, I am the Orville Redenbacher of joy and life's popcorn is about to get it. And we have self-love. So here, this always, you have a lot of mirroring in here. That's why I was like, twin flames. I openly embrace a feeling of self-love. I love myself because I understand myself. I love myself as the most committed partner I will ever have. I show myself love any way that I can. And when I screw up, I remember to be sweet and gentle with myself. If not, I'm going to make myself sleep on the couch. Got that self? So yeah, in the moments of separation, it really is about... It's about focusing on your own self-love. And like I said, that's something that I needed to learn. I needed to... When, listen, I was on a very stagnant path in my life. When I met my counterpart, I was in a place where I didn't see myself. I didn't trust myself. And when I say see myself, I didn't see myself truly. I was wearing a mask and, you know, it was a huge tower moment. Again, this this journey really is about yourself as much as as it is about union. Now, my heart cards are across the room, so I'm just gonna go get them. I'll try not to make too much noise with my chair. Guys, I just saw the clock. I, I can't believe how I lose time with you guys. I just don't even pay attention. We have look inside yourself, examine what is causing you to feel this way. Your person is looking inside themselves right now. I saw a naked card. I got to cover it up. Look deep within your heart and you will feel my love. My love for you is as deep as the ocean. We have trust. Transformation occurs through acceptance. Once you accept the current situation, it will automatically transform. Time. You are trying too hard. Give it time. Laughter is the best therapy. Have some fun together and remember love is the greatest healer. So if you are regenerating with this person, just remember not to spend too much time fighting, criticizing, talking about the past. It is important that we speak about the past and heal from the past, but it's also important that we don't live in the past and, you know, ruin the connection before we can even try and begin again. Give thanks for the blessings of love to soon come your way. 
Know that you deserve to be and have all that your heart truly desires. Healing. Imagine yourself and your beloved surrounded by light. Feel your relationship being healed at this very moment. Romance. Cupid's arrow strikes. Don't make decisions based on guilt or what you think you should do or what other people think you should do, you guys. Like, I'm sorry, but your friends. Friends, if they don't have a soul connection, it's hard for them to give advice about a soul connection. I'm just going to put that out there. For it is only in being true to yourself that you can be true to others. And that is very true. So again, you know, I spoke about being on a stagnant version, stagnant place in my life. And if you've watched my Twin Flame readings, it was innocent, but I, you know, I was married with four children when I met my counterpart. And I went through that internal battle that, what was that last card about? The one about trust, or the one about choosing a path because you think others think you should. I battled that. I really did. I battled wondering, should I just ignore this? Because that's what society has told me that I'm supposed to do or do I explore it and look within myself at why I'm feeling this way anyway let's get you some charms every time I leave my house I forget to get a tray I keep meaning to get a tray JJ we have E, N, S, S, L, X, G, K, P, L, J, W, M, C, F, O, G, J, R, P, I, I, A, and H. Sorry for the noise. Sorry for my friends who wear headphones. I wear noise canceling headphones all day, every day. <laughs> because noises hurt me. All right, let's see what we have for charms today. Giving them a stir. We have an angel wing, moon and stars, the tree of life. We have a dolphin. We have Aries energy, emperor. <laughs> I don't, I think that's an angel or a fairy. Um, we have a four leaf clover. We have foundations, building foundations, transformation, another fairy. Okay, we have two fairies. That's beautiful. We have a peace sign, peace is restored, harmony I'm hearing. <clears throat> Stars aligning, divinely guided. We have the fan, wheel of fortune. We have ace of pentacles, new beginning. I mean, it's a coin, but you guys get the drift. Maybe coins are important, maybe you're a banker. We have, look, we have this little divine masculine lion. <laughs> it's Leo energy. We have the skull, death and rebirth. We have another fairy. My goodness, lots of fairies. We have another wing. That's very interesting, the two wings. That makes me think of twin flames. We have this J. This J haunts me. Who are you, J? <laughs> we have a fork, a fish, Pisces energy. We have a, a lion. That's an elephant. <laughs> Uh, crown, another skull, so death and rebirth, very heavy, very heavy energy of that. Another fish, guys, look at all the twos we have. We have two wings, two skulls, two fish, 
two fairies and possibly an angel. I'm not sure. Wheel of Fortune. Yoga. A cross. Two four-leaf clovers. A butterfly. A snowflake. That's how I would characterize twin flame connections, actually. Like a snowflake. Very delicate. Very unique. One of a kind. We have the horse, chariot energy. We have a child, so children could be important. We have a star, another butterfly, and a wrench. Lots of charms. All right, my beautiful pile ones. I'm gonna leave it here. I hope you enjoyed your reading. I have, I have no idea how it was that long. I didn't realize, but yeah, thank you for joining me and I hope the rest of your day goes well. I hope this resonated. And as always, I am sending you lots of love and light. Bye. Hello, Pile 2, and welcome to your reading. If you chose this green fluorite heart and the unfolding path tarot, this is going to be your reading all about you and your person, you and them. I think it's more like an energy check, and then I ask some nosy questions. <laughs> but yeah, before we get into the tarot, um, I'm curious if anyone yesterday from pile three is here because I'm using the same deck and stone as pile three yesterday. So I'm just curious if any of my pile threes are in here, but yeah. So before we get into the tarot, we're going to get into the Oracle cards. <clears throat> so we have the thread now for the first pile. I did it their energy, your energy. I do feel like this is your person's energy, but once we get into the cards, I may, like, I'm not sure if that's going to stand true for now. I feel like this is your person's energy, but please take it as it resonates as the energies could be reversed. We have seven, discipline, determination. Rhinoceroses, rhinos, rhinoceroses could be important. For this side, we have the self, and we have the wheel, change, and possibilities. How are you all going to fit? Oh, I got to keep it balanced here. I had to push my roses out of the way because I needed to fit everything in. I mean, we can kind of see that chariot. It is gloomy today, you guys. So this corner is a little dark. And we have flow. So. What? Again, please take it as it resonates. I am going to read it. This is your person. That's you. And we'll see if this is. For me, pile one was very much about a twin flame connection. I'm already feeling that's a possibility here. Again, I get a lot of downloads and readings and attracting the energy of divine counterparts. It's It's been very interesting how many or how often I channel counterpart energy. And again, with the Wheel of Fortune, the self and the thread and the chariot. Okay, so I will say when I pulled these cards, I did not choose, like I know for some readings, people will choose like the court cards to choose from for energies or they'll choose, they'll pick out all the major arcana cards. It's a way of reading and I've done readings like that. But for this one, I used, I just used the entire deck. And so it's very interesting that you had two major arcana cards come out as what you and your person are going through. That's very interesting. Now, I haven't looked at the tarot yet, so I'm not sure the current energy on in 3D between you two. But in the 5D, I do see that energy is flowing here. So... Let's see what these cards say. We do see this flow card. Energy is open. Energy is flowing. Somebody's feeling the tug on this thread. 
before we even get into tarot, I actually want to take a look at, sorry, those are just my charms peeking out there. I actually want to look at this card. It's very interesting because it's on page 25, which equals seven, which is the chariot, which your person, take it as it resonates, is coming up as the chariot. So let me read the flow card because that's meant to be the connecting energy between you two. There are times to hold on tight to the shore and there are times to enter the flow. Notice where life is going and move in that direction. Watch for signs and follow them. Don't resist. When you go with the flow, your your life force expands and healing on all level and healing on all levels abounds. This is also the time to release old limiting patterns forgive and let the let go of the need to be right about your beliefs. Even if you aren't feeling the smooth currents of life, it might mean that you're being self-critical or judgmental. When you enter the flow with gratitude and love, you will find blessings surround you. You will enter a state of grace and healing will abound. So yeah, there's this very open healing energy here. So you know, I'm getting a few messages right away before even looking at the tarot. We have cancer energy. <clears throat> we have, <clears throat> excuse me. We have, um, we have the wheel of fortune. <clears throat> I don't know why, but my throat is uh, closing up. So it's not in here, but the wheel of fortune is, represents the fixed signs. And the fixed signs are, what are they? I believe they're Taurus, Leo, Aquarius. I'm going to look it up. <laughs> Just so that I know. I mean, I already do know. Yeah, Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius. I thought it was Scorpio or Pisces, so I was one away. So yeah, we have Cancer and... Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius. Sometimes with the self card, I do get a little bit of Virgo energy. But yeah, let's see what's going on. Let's see what's going on here between you and your person. Six of Cups. Are you together? person is definitely feeling pulled towards you. I feel the pull on that thread. And we have the chariot. So like they're feeling this pull towards your energy. It could be that you guys are already moving forward together. Take it as it resonates. So first we're going to look at the current energy. The Knight of Pentacles. That's very interesting. So for me, I'm getting the feeling. Again, I don't want to box you into a circumstance here. So what I'm seeing is that I feel like you and this person, this is earth energy. So you're moving forward very, very slowly, very slowly, or this person is moving slowly towards you and you could be focused on yourself right now. I'm, again, with these cards, I'm not exactly sure if, what's on the bottom? We have the nine of wands. So you could be not in contact with this person right now. The nine of wands is that energy of determination, not giving up. So for some of you, I am feeling that you are in the energy of focusing on yourself, dealing with your own destiny, really, really focusing on self-love. And maybe you're not in contact with that person, but this has opened this portal of energy flowing. And this person is really feeling the pull on your energy. I know I talk about it all the time, but that this card literally... They're feeling the pull on that red string of fate and they're feeling pulled towards you. So for some of you, I feel like you're working on yourself. 
and this person's feeling it, they're feeling that need to come towards you. And for others, maybe the energy between you is flowing now because there was a change, because a karmic situation ended or karmic cycle came to an end. Even a cycle between you and your person, behavior-wise, came to an end. It's amazing when we when we fix, sometimes those cycles, we don't understand them. And then as we're recognizing and healing them, we look back and think, man, like, why couldn't I see that eight months ago? But anyway, I don't know why I said eight months. That could be relevant. But we see there has been changes here and it's opened up this flow. So for some of you, you could be with this person, just things are moving very, very slowly. And maybe that confuses you. All right, let's get what is helping or harming. That'll give us information for both situations. What is helping or harming? So we have the seven of, very interesting. We have the seven of, pent, the seven of wands coming out in reverse. And we also have the queen of pentacles on the bottom. So if you are together or talking, it could be helping the fact that you're so focused on yourself. We have this Queen of Pentacles energy, that's Earth energy. It's a very self-sufficient energy. It's you focusing. Can you even see that as I'm talking? It's you focusing on yourself. It's you protecting yourself, being your own provider. It's also, it can be a very nurturing energy. So that in itself could really be helping this connection because again it's something about when the when the feminine works on herself it really pulls that masculine energy back in i don't i'm not saying this is a twin flame connection but we do see that red thread so that is kind of telling now the seven of wands can talk about it can talk about being blocked so what's helping or harming this connection? For those of you, for those of you who are in separation, what's harming this right now, or what harmed it in the past, was this can talk about someone being very defensive. And we did see the nine of wands on the bottom earlier. Oh, I didn't say signs yet anyway we'll get to it so somebody could have been feeling very defensive here or someone could still be be feeling defensive maybe you're feeling defensive maybe this person is coming towards you and they've hurt you so you have your defenses up this card also talks about being blocked so possibly one of you have each other blocked but for what's helping it break up from external pressure that's very interesting Anyway, for what's helping it, we do have this card talks about setting boundaries in a relationship. So if you are with this person and you are working on yourself, focusing on yourself, on your own possibilities, that queen of pentacles energy, it actually is helping here. It's helping this person because just by doing that, you are setting boundaries that you're more important. You are the most important person to you. They need to realize that. It's a hard lesson for people pleasers to learn, like myself. I often talk about how for a long time I didn't believe I came first, so I would overgive. I still overgive. I know I'm trying to I'm trying to work on it. But that, you know, on on the plane, they say, grab your mask first before you do anybody else's. And I honestly, I was so, I was so much a people pleaser that I, I actually didn't believe that was a real thing. I thought, who would actually do that? Like, but it was the way I was raised. Anyway, I do feel that by focusing on yourself here, it is helping this connection. It's taking some of the pressure off this person. And it's also helping set boundaries here so that this person knows that you are focused on yourself, that the energy can flow here, but that you're no longer here to be taken advantage of. You're here to 
have an equal give and take, exchange energy, have a flow of energy. For some of you, yeah, if you're not in contact, it could be what's blocking this is that one of you have each other blocked. Because the seven of the seven of so, sorry, the seven of wands does talk about being blocked. Also, I will bring up, I'm getting all kinds of messages that the seven of wands can also represent having to defend <clears throat> very th blocked throat chakra, having to defend your relationship. So especially if you're a twin flame, you know, your friends get sick of hearing about it. They get sick of hearing about the toxicity, the fighting, the separation, the will they won't they. And this can talk about outside influences. Well, it did say external influences blocking this. So that can just be, you know, family and friends blocking it simply from not understanding it. All right, what's next? We have... We're going to do what your energy is right now. What is the viewer's energy? Please only take it as it resonates. We have the King of Wands. Very, There's a lot of fire. I'm going to get one more card. Your energy, King of Wands. Knight of Wands. This is very interesting. So we have Nine of Pentacles on the bottom. So for a lot of you, I feel like you are focused on yourself and that you're single. Please only take that if it resonates. The Nine of Pentacles is a very single card. It's about focusing on yourself, putting your energy into yourself, filling your own cup up, even though it's a pentacle, <clears throat> even though it's a pentacle. It's very interesting, these cards, about how you're feeling about this connection, because... I haven't even gotten into signs yet here. I'm getting carried away. Let's get their energy and then we'll talk about signs. What are their person's thoughts and feelings about this connection? That's way too many, but thank you. Oh my goodness, look at all the cards. That's way too many. They exploded out of my hand. All right, let's... What is their person's energy about this connection? Juggling act, trying to prioritize things in their life. It's very interesting. So I do get the feeling that for some of you, this person is ghosting you. <clears throat> that could just be for some of you or have you blocked. Um, so for signs, we have Earth Energy, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. I mentioned the other ones, the fixed signs. <clears throat> we have Cancer. We have Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, and some water, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. So <clears throat> again... I feel like right now you might not even see anything happening in this connection with the Knight of Pentacles. Your energy, how you feel about this connection is very telling because we have the King and the Knight of Wands and it's like, this is a very telling two cards because to me it says you saw the potential in this person. This is a fire sign. You saw the potential. You saw... You felt the passion. I'm feeling a lot of fire here, a lot of attraction, maybe a lot of sexual chemistry. But to me, it looks like you're looking at this person like you saw all this potential in them, but that they were a knight of wands. They were, they could have been a player. They could have been in and out. They could have been hot and cold. That could be your energy. I'm not sure. Maybe you, maybe you were scared by the intensity of this connection and you were the one to run. But the message that I'm hearing, especially with the knight and the king, is that you wanted the king, you saw the potential that this person could be the king, but they ended up being the knight of wands and possibly ran from this connection. There's a few cards about blocking, running, ghosting, sneaking away, that type of energy. So I just wanted to bring it up. Now, I do see that this person... 
if you're in no contact, I see that you're really working on yourself here. I feel like maybe the universe stepped in to cause you to go into self-reflection. Again, your person could have blocked you or ran from the connection, pushed the connection away. And I believe that you're taking this opportunity to really work on yourself. And, you know, the Knight of Wands, for those of you who still care about this person and love this person, the Knight of Wands is also a very determined energy. And that could be your energy. You could be determined, you know, you could be determined to make it work. You could be determined to reconnect with this king. So please take it as it resonates as this is a general reading. That's why I mention a few different scenarios because I am reading for quite a few people and you'll be at different... <clears throat> I swear this person's going to communicate with you if they haven't. Um, what's really interesting is we're all on different parts of this journey. So some people who are watching this will be near the end. Some of them will be at a different part. I do see that... I do feel like you still see the potential with this person. And again, there's this determination about that night of that night of wands there. I do believe you're determined on working on yourself as well, your own energy, putting yourself first. And maybe that's your karmic lesson. For their energy, we have the two of pentacles. We had three cards come out. So right now their energy is, they could be having a lot of dreams about you. If you are having dreams about them, they're having dreams about you. It could be that they're confused by your energy right now, because this is a card of confusion. Like you look up, you look at this person and she's just kind of like, I don't, I don't really know what's going on. It's about clouded vision. And with the two of pentacles and the nine of pentacles, I feel like your person is trying to balance something here in their life. Maybe they didn't prioritize you. Maybe it was that in and out energy, that Knight of Wands player. We also see the Seven of Cups, which you can talk about. It's that same type of energy, having lots of options. I'm not saying they have options now, but this is their thoughts, feelings, or energies regarding this connection. And I do feel like there's this energy that they were trying to juggle you and something else. I'm not saying it's a person. It could very well be work, friends, anything. It could just be that they weren't prioritizing you. And I see this person looking at you now as this Nine of Pentacles, which is the mini empress. So they're looking at you like, I feel like they're looking at you like you're single, like you're shining. The Nine of Pentacles is very much about working on yourself, focusing on yourself. Queen of Pentacles came out right at the beginning too. Um, very similar energy. This person could be... You could be glowing to them right now just because you're working on yourself. The Seven of Cups also symbolizes that they could be looking at you as someone who has a lot of options or other options. So if you've experienced a separation or no contact with this person, you know, they're looking at you like, well, look at all the options they have now. They're shining. They're working on themselves. And it is that energy of working on yourself, self-improvement that causes this. This pull, and I talk about it all the time in my readings, I say to people in their personal readings, they'll say, I can't stop thinking about my person. And it's because they're thinking about you. You're connected by this cord. And this connection is meant to transform you. We see so much about transformation. It's actually very symbolic. I didn't even realize this that we have all this rainbow around you. So all this transformation, all this beautiful transforming energy, balancing your chakras, realizing your self-worth, realizing the gem, the pearl that's inside of you. And what happens to this person? They feel that tug and now they're starting the transformation process. And look at their little rainbow and look at yours. Like, I'm not trying to compare, but... <laughs> I'm just saying there's this energy of very much being focused on yourself. 
and it's causing this person to move towards you energetically. It's opened up this flow. And I see it on my twin flame cards that, you know, sometimes the smallest things, even just speaking into existence, your manifestations or your hopes can open the energy back up when it's blocked. It's energy is absolutely amazing. So yeah, they're looking at you as you could have options right now. They're looking at you as, you know, they want to be able to balance this. They want to be able to be better for you. All right, I want to see, I'm kind of want to, I want to see what's coming next in this connection because I'm nosy. What's coming next? The Hermit, Virgo energy. I said Hermit there. So this is about healing. This is about, there's inner work coming within this relationship. So take that as it resonates. It could be yours. I feel like it's both of you. And I feel, I feel like your person, oh, no way. Oh my goodness. For what's coming next, we have the hermit and the lovers. Look at that lovers. That is... Look at the two apples. This is beautiful. This is Gemini energy. So you are going to have a choice to make here. And I do feel like you're going to have to possibly choose if you want to forgive this person. I'm not sure how this is going to resonate for you. But for what's coming next, we have inner work healing and this beautiful connection. This could be reconciliation. And we have the sun behind them. It's just beautiful energy. I'm keeping this card. That's the first time. I think that's the first time I've seen the lovers in this deck. It's very beautiful energy. What else is coming next? The Page of Swords. So again, there's a lot here about self-work. This person, they could be watching you right now online. But the Page of Swords also talks about you know, working on yourself. It talks about doing things to be a better communicator. And, you know, in some decks we see the person, I'm thinking of my panda deck specifically, but we see in that deck, the panda has glasses on and it can represent studying yourself. So I feel like both of you are working on yourselves here and it's helping to bring you closer. I do have, I have a love tarot book that has a bunch of meanings in it that I like to, every now and again, I'll grab it just to see. And I want to see the Page of Pentacles. No, Page of Swords. Communication. Intellectual relationship. The Page of Swords is an indicator of swift communication, brilliant ideas, a curious mind who thrives on on almost a kind of nervous energy. Very interesting. So again, I do feel like this is about you and this person are gonna learn how to communicate better with each other, I'm seeing. We have the Eight of Pentacles, which, oh look, the King of Pentacles is here for his queen. Um, the Eight of Pentacles, you know, it's about it's about a journey that's worth it. I've been talking about it in some of my readings, especially in soul connections. It's about choosing the hard connection, knowing that, yes, we've been through it. Yes, it's incredibly hard to get these pentacles. Like, how hard would it be to style your hair like that? Okay? But for this card, it was worth it, right? <laughs> and that's what it is. It's a... It's long-term investment, and it's a connection that's worth all the work. Beautiful. Can we see the potential outcome? The Hierophant. Oh my gosh! Guys! Spiritual elevation. Your person elevating spiritually. I always, I always tell my twin flamies, 
my feminines, if you want to be, if you're feeling called to be a light worker, follow that. Because I was just saying to my partner earlier that I talk to some of you and you say things like, I always wanted to be a tarot reader, but I don't think I could. And I was saying those same things. I was saying all of those same things. I was saying I believed all of that. So you have the potential to here to be a teacher or to impart your wisdom on others. The Hierophant is also about communication, about communicating truths and feelings, and it's about a higher level of commitment. So marriage, spiritual bond, absolutely beautiful as a potential outcome. We also have three of pentacles on the bottom and the star, Aquarius energy, more earth, which is about collaboration and working together and about healing. So let's get you some oracle cards now, more oracles. I know we already have some out, but we're gonna get more. Guys, I just, very interesting. I just lifted up the top card of that deck. I was just curious and it's the eight of wands, forward movement and communication, very interesting. I lifted up the top card before putting these back down. I don't normally do that. And when I do, I feel the need to mention it because there's usually a very specific message. So let's get moon cards first. Communication is key. Communication is big in this one. Remember the entire, the entire reading I was, <clears throat> and I was like, I think someone wants to communicate with you. And then intuitively called to pick up the Eight of Wands. And now we have communication is key. New Moon and Gemini. And you know what, guys? Communication can sometimes be the hardy, hard, hardiest. Oh my goodness. The hardest barrier it was in mine and my counterpart and I. The way we communicated, we were communicated like... We were communicating like through our wounded inner child. And it was just not good. It was not good. What do you need to release? So there could be something that you need to release. Are you, a, do you want to be a light worker? Are you afraid of putting yourself out there? Don't be afraid. I was terrified to put myself out there and I've been, I feel like the people I was meant to reach have found me and I feel incredibly grateful. Maybe with that, what do you need to release? It's almost like that energy that we had was was an energy of release. So maybe you've already released your expectations about this connection. Luck is on your side. New moon and Sagittarius. Sagittarius season is coming up. Not soon enough, but oh, blue moon. Yes. Belief in the impossible. We have a blue moon this month, guys. Once in a blue moon. Once in a blue moon. That's the expression. Expect the unexpected, you guys. Blue moon. Very beautiful. I love that that came out. Adjustments are required. Third quarter moon. So just keep working on yourself. It's possible with this adjustments card. You know, I was getting that blocked energy, so it's possible that somebody has to unblock something here. We also have a fiery climax approaches, new moon in Aries. Beautiful. All right, next oracle that we're going to do. These ones. These ones, yes. So, Spirit, what message do you have about this connection? Breathe. So this very much is an energy of stillness. It's also equals 11, very twin flamey. On the bottom of the deck, we have action. So for a lot of you, I feel like you are in the moment of yin. So receiving, waiting, Focusing on yourself, acceptance. That's very strange. She looks like a character off of one of my favorite shows that I really don't like. 
That's very interesting. She looks just like her. If there are any ER fans in here, <laughs> I know it's old. I love the show ER. I love it. But anyway, Breathe is about... It's that feminine energy of accepting that you can't control it and just knowing that something is coming. And what's very interesting is we have breathe here. And then on the bottom of the deck, we have yang, which is masculine energy and about somebody taking action. So if you're feeling called to take action, I'm not telling you not to. I really, I have a hard time telling people not to contact and to contact. I always tell people to listen to their intuition, but I'm seeing that this is probably your person's energy here. And they are in an energy of action here. And again, blue moon coming up, blue moon. Actually with that, that equals one, one, one. So every pile, I tend to look something up so that we can learn something together. So let's look it up. When it comes to relationships, the angel number 111 means to take chances and try new things. Be a yes person, so to speak. The green light associated with an angel number 111 reminds us not to overthink things. If you're seeing a lot of 111, take a chance and go for it. Very interesting. What else, Spirit? Let's get one more card. What do we need to know about this connection? Higher power. Yep. Again, I get a lot of these twin flamey connections. And this is, again, about listening to your higher power, listening to your intuition, knowing that all of this is happening for a reason. It's all happening for your highest good, the separation, the triggers. It's all happening for your highest good. Here we have more. It's a lot of energy about you just being focused on yourself and being poised and ready for this connection to move ahead. It's very interesting. And I think that's what's causing the other person to feel that pull and the need to take action towards you. You and this person, you had the thread card and now we have the, this card, which does talk about being, you know, telepathically connected. We have financial constraints. So that actually equals... Um, 13, which is death and rebirth. So it's possible your person is also going through some financial hardships or you are, and it's a factor here. Take that as it resonates. That card actually also reminds me of, hang on. This card actually also reminds me of the four of pentacles because it does reduce to four. And the Four of Pentacles is about, I know this says financial constraints, but again, it has the energy of the Four of Pentacles. And the Four of Pentacles is about, it can be about not being able to let go of a connection and holding on to it, having that, feeling that bond and you can't. Ooh, community, seven, more chariot energy. So... For those of you who are really working on yourself, this, this card is about finding your soul family. And it's about, it's about finding your people. And you're working on yourself so much right now and really focusing on how you can change and be the truest version of yourself. And it is attracting your people. It's attracting your community. This is also very much like we see the cups. So this is very symbolic of three of cups energy, which is also about, I know that when we hear threes, we tend to think third party, but the three of cups in love is actually about working together for a mutually beneficial romantic relationship. 
So this card shows women celebrating, sharing ideas and supportive energy. The lights in the pictures, the lights in the picture represent your ever present spirit community as well. So your spirit guides. This card, when this card appears, it indicates an association of some kind. It may be a casual connection with like-minded people, joining a club or a community of some sort, or even a business partner consisting of three or more entities. The time is right to make new connections and share intentions, whether they're personal or professional. Very interesting. Like the happy family card, this could also indicate a party or celebration of some kind. Now in the reverse, it does talk about feeling lonely and isolated. So it's possible that you and your person are feeling very, very disconnected from each other. I will say something about that card does talk about when you raise your vibration, when you work on yourself and raise your vibration, you start to lose the people in your life. And I, I wish I could say it wasn't true, but it is true. You outgrow them energetically and you start to see that you have very different values and want very different things. And it's almost like that person can bring your energy down, your vibration down, the more you talk to them. And it is a hard part of the awakening process. I lost most of my family in my awakening process. And I did lose my friend, my best friend, but eventually we reconnected and we're still best friends. She's not spiritual. So that's, it's hard for me to be my true authentic self because I can't talk about all this magical stuff. But so you won't, you know, you don't lose everybody, but you do, you outgrow people. So we have peacefulness, nature, positive thinking and authenticity. It's interesting. Oh, divine timing. Oh my goodness. Spirit, come on. <laughs> all right, let's read all of these. <laughs> Positive thinking. In the garden of my mind, I water the good thoughts and weed out the bad ones. I throw in forgiveness and empathy seeds by the handful if I want, and I take a lawnmower to that jealousy and resentment patch. I'm a pretty badass mind gardener. Nature. It's time to unleash your inner hippie and step outside of that man-made box. Take a walk in the woods, smell those flowers, hug some trees. You might think you're being ironic, like look at me, I'm being all tree huggery and stuff. But you'll find that even then, those trees will hug you back. Trees come from a time before irony, and their earnestness is impervious to our jaded humor. If that doesn't make you want to hug them even more, well, then I guess you're a robot. Peacefulness. I have a peaceful, tranquil, and untroubled heart. This is where I choose to spend my time. I can bring guests, but any person, thought, or event that brings drama or chaos is not invited. We were just talking about having to release people who don't energetically match you. My heart is a special property and I'm going to keep it that way so that we can all keep enjoying it and I can get my security deposit back. Authenticity is the name of the game. Whatever comes up, I will feel it. Whatever needs to be said, I will say it. Whoever doesn't get it, doesn't have to get it, but at least they know it because I've said it and that's way better than leaving a passive aggressive note about it. And divine timing, divine or everything is timing and timing is everything. Gladly, I release my concern over timing and let things happen when and as they will. I'm hearing a weird noise. I think it might be rain. I trust that the divine schedule makers know what they're doing. It can take a long time to reach divine middle management. And I want to get you some heart cards. Where did I set them down? There they are. So what information do you have about this connection? What messages do you have about this connection, Spirit? What messages do you have? Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Guys, I have to tell you my twin flame, this 
this deck, the Twin Flame card does not come out very much. Twin Flames, your passion ignites. Very interesting. Again, we saw that flow card, so there is an opening here. Let there be closeness between you, but always give each other space. Love never claims, it simply allows and gives. I'm not sure if it was this pile I was talking about, but like every time my counterpart came back in, I would stop like giving myself space and time. And so this one is a very important one. You need your own space and time. It is important right now to take a step back and spend some time alone. Instead of placing your focus on another, now is the time to give to yourself. Soulmate, your soulmate is already with you in spirit. Believe this and they will manifest physically. Deep in your heart, you already know the answer. Do what feels right. Listen to that intuition, file two. The past is now behind you. Release it and embrace new possibilities. A new path is now available to you. Follow it with faith. New beginning, a new adventure awaits. Embrace it and live your dreams passionately. And power, you instinctively know what is right for you and you have the power to say no or to walk away at any time. So let's do charms. It's funny, this one turned out to be just as long as pile one. All right, so let's make some room here. And again, this helps me to uh, stay more organized. So thank you for supporting me in my organizational skills. <laughs> my organizational endeavors, I don't know. Letters, 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 letters. All right, we have R, F, you, I'm here in runner, J, fudge. <laughs> I know that's not how you spell fudge. <laughs> X, S, B, F, G, I, M, the Sims, Simpsons or Sims could be relevant. I knew I heard someone, something, it's my neighbor mowing their lawn again. H, P, C, A, G, J, two J's again, J, J, W, L, L, oh, look, we have LOL, lol. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's about to rain. And my neighbor, who has very short grass, is out mowing again, retired. <laughs> All right, let's see what we have here. All right, we have a key, a key, a fan, wheel of fortune, divinely guided, transformation, high priestess, unicorn, magical, a heart key. We have a plane, travel could be important. We have a rose, Christmas could be important. We have a koi fish, a peacock, Divine Feminine, Divinely Guided. We have the Twin Flame Hearts. We have an Elephant. The Bunny Playing Tennis. The Cobra, very interesting. The Cobra can symbolize spiritualness, um, shedding of a skin, Dragonfly. We have a Little Child. Tree of Life. We have a Turtle. We have a kitty cat, an angel, a peace sign, a horse, chariot energy. We have a cross, a butterfly, a candy cane, an angel, a star, the bicycle, and another star. So there you are, my beautiful pile twos. I'm gonna leave this reading here. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. If you do want to book a reading with me, I have availability for next week. And I am sending you lots of love and light. Thank you for watching my ads. Thank you for all the support. And I'm just sending you guys so much love. And I'm sending your person love too. Bye. Hello, Pile 3, and welcome to your reading. So if you chose the Anime Tarot and the Slipetalite Heart... <laughs> This is going to be your reading. So while I chat to you, I'm going to take the sticker off. I think it's funny because I always say I feel very comfortable in pile three and 
Yesterday, I spent time picking a sticker off this heart in pile three. And as I, in the intro, you might have noticed, I had this urge to pick the sticker off. So I thought I'd pick it off while we talk. <laughs> so today we're going to be looking at the energy between you and your person. And I'm trying not to assume if you're together or not. I'm trying to give messages for multiple uh, multiple scenarios. And before we get into the tarot, I do have some pre-shuffled oracle cards to do an energy check. And then we're going to look at tarot and then we're going to get more, <clears throat> more oracle cards. <laughs> you can never have enough. <laughs> At least that's what I believe. So yeah, before we get into your cards, let's get into these oracle cards. So I'm not sure how the energy is going to play out here. I have been doing it, the viewer and the viewer's person, but we'll see what comes out here. So I believe this is the one that was your person. But again, take it as it resonates once we start talking about the energy. The Ten of Acorns, Responsibility, Dedication. So I know for me, I automatically assume acorns are pentacles, but they're not. Um, oh my gosh, I can't believe I have to look that up again. Every time... Every time I use this deck, I gotta look it up because my brain says pentacles, but I'm pretty sure acorns are wands. Let me see. Again, beautiful deck, but very confusing. <laughs> Fire, yes, acorns. So we see the ten of wands. So we have a heart, the heart, and we have the ten of wands, and it says responsibility and dedication. I would like to point out it's very interesting how that sun is shining down on that. I believe that's a donkey. So I believe this is your energy. We have love, choice, trust. Oh, this is the lovers. I didn't even realize that. Oh, that's very beautiful. All right, make room. I'm sorry that that's in the shadows. <laughs> and we have trust. So I'm getting a lot of different energies here. For some of you, you could be... For some of you, I feel like you're together. I'm going to get some tarot cards to... Uh... To confirm this energy, I'm just looking at the book for... This is very interesting energy. So the heart, which we have here representing your person, it's... I feel like your person is going through a heart awakening. And I feel... There's a very warm feeling with that energy and it's a very gentle energy and a energy of clarity. And we see the two people in the boat together and look at those circles that are, you know, intertwined. And this looks like a nest to me. This is very beautiful energy. There's two cards about trust here. That's very interesting. I'm just looking at the book here. This card encourages us to move past the layers of life's tangles and knots and enter the wild and sacred center of the self. This is beautiful. 
Now, as for your energy, again, this could be, this very much could be reversed. It could be mirrored, especially if this is a soul connection. I do, you know, we have the lovers there, so this is definitely a soul connection. Mm, yeah, see, we have the gem here, and the gem is, the gem is irreplaceable. It's the gold. It's, I see the empress. I see, it's a very unique energy, a very irreplaceable energy. All right, so I just wanted to look at those. As we were talking, I was looking at the book for these two energies. Oh my goodness, look. The universe, which is the world card. This is beautiful. So Spirit, I'm doing an energy check for pile number three. This is current or soon to be energy. And it's kind of, you know, we're looking at, we want to see what's going on here between these two. And then we might get a little nosy. <laughs> All right. So, pile three. What messages do we have for pile three today? So, I'm going to get my piece of paper to keep me on track because shiny things distract me. <laughs> we have judgment on the bottom. Look at that. We have judgment on the bottom. I'm covering the naked people. Very interesting. All right, so we're gonna look at current energy between these two. All right, so let's look at current energy. Current energy, please, spirit, between these two. Current energy. Very interesting. We had, this is beautiful. We had, I had that on the, that was on the bottom of the deck when I first started the reading. So we have six and a six and an ace. Actually, we'll just layer. We'll layer. That's what we'll do. We'll layer. Oh, this is lovely energy. Look at that. Two aces, you guys. Okay, so what I am going to say is I do feel like you are together. And if you're not, you're... This could be future energy. This is a timeless message. I do like to kind of work with the back of the deck as I'm reading. So let's get into it. So right now I see that your person... Again, if it's mirrored, take it as it resonates, whatever side. But this is your person, this is you. And what I'm seeing is, I feel like you and this person have had a separation. I feel like you've really been, this connection has tested you. There is a lover's bond here, so a soul bond, possible counterparts. And I feel for a lot of you that this situation has called for a lot of trust on both of your parts. I kind of feel, I'm kind of getting the feeling that for a lot of you, you knew what this connection meant to you and you've always known what it meant to you. And I feel like you always wanted success here. You always wanted to choose this person and trust this person. I do feel because we have the six of swords here, and that trust card, I do feel like there was a separation or a breakup separating the two of you. And maybe one of you had to make a choice. And for example, maybe somebody wasn't giving enough to this connection because the current energy is six of discs, which is the six of pentacles. So that tells me that that's the current energy, which means in the past, there might have been an imbalance and this could have caused 
you to choose yourself or to choose a different path. And what I see here is that your person experienced a 10 of wands moment when that happened. And it's interesting how this, <clears throat> this donkey, I think, yeah, that's a donkey, is focused over here, like completely drawn over here to this gem. I do feel like there was burdens here in this connection. It's possible that, again, I'm getting the feeling that your person might not have been giving enough to this connection, or they couldn't give enough, or they didn't, maybe they didn't take responsibility for how little they were giving or responsibility for some of the ways they were behaving. And we see this person now in this energy of enlightenment. We see the sun here. I definitely feel like this person has gone through a heart awakening, possibly an ego death as well. And like divine masculine energy here, take it as it resonates. This is fire energy. So Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, we have Gemini here. And we'll get into the signs down here once we have the cards. But this person, again, take it as it resonates. I do feel like you had to make a choice or somebody had to make a choice. And it was the, the Ten of Wands. We usually see the person with all the wands on their back. And I hear the straw that broke the camel's back. And it there really, I feel like there was a moment that triggered this person into this awakening, into realizing how special this connection is. I do think we have a 10 here. So I do feel, you know, that this person feels and has awakened to the fact that this is a destined connection. They feel drawn to you. They feel drawn to your energy. It's interesting how we have the moon here and this boat kind of being guided by the moon. I do feel like both of you had to really listen to your intuition. I feel like your energy has always drawn this person back. The gem is a very special energy. It's a very one of a kind energy. And in soul connections, we experience a connection that's unexplainable. And I know you guys know what I'm talking about when I say a soul connection. It's It really is like a thread is connecting you. It really is like your energies are intertwined. And not only do they, you know, in a soul connection, not only are they attracted to you, but they're attracted to your soul. And it just, it makes the connection so strong. And what I'm seeing here is I, I do feel like this person maybe was closed off to this, how we see this. We see this really small little opening here in this very dense nest. And I feel like possibly this person was closed off to this connection. Maybe they blocked you for a while. Take it as it resonates. Maybe they pushed it away. Maybe they knight of, knight of wands energy ran from the connection. I do feel like this connection is one with that 10 of wands, the 10 of acorns. I do feel like it is a connection that you and this person went through a lot together. It's really interesting how similar these images are, isn't it? How big, like this is huge and glowing and awakened. And we see this dense matter around it. And then we see this one, there's like this little spark here. So I feel like you were awakened to this connection long before your person. I feel like this person looks at you like you are irreplaceable. They could have, I'm not seeing cards that say they tried to replace you, but this is an energy of even if you try, you can't replace it. You can't match it. Um, soul bonds are unmatchable. And 
It's why they trigger us so much and trigger us to heal and grow and to teach us lessons. Currently, I feel like you guys are talking and working it out. And there's this beautiful new beginning. We have the Ace of Discs, which is the Ace of Pentacles. So that's Earth energy. It's stable. I feel like after a long time, you could possibly be really working on building a solid foundation. And that's what these relationships, these soul contracts need. Divine counterparts, soul contracts. They need strong foundations because there are tower moments and you need a foundation that can withstand those tower moments and triggers. And it's very interesting because there's a lot of sixes in your, in your energy which represent harmony and union. So I do believe a lot of you are talking or about to be in the union or already are in union. We have two aces here. I feel, oh, look, they ate them. Yeah. <laughs> If you guys can understand me. <laughs> we have the Ace of Swords. So I feel like both of you are coming to this with clarity. And then we have the Eight of Discs, which is that energy. I keep talking about it. It keeps coming up in my readings. It's that energy of knowing how worth it it is. All the... It's like trusting that it's worth it. And it's picking a connection that is hard work but also very rewarding and i've been explaining it like choosing a, a soul connection that does require hard work but it's meant to change you it's meant to really bring you abundance and again i feel like you guys are coming towards this with clarity now this is a very refreshing energy and i feel that you've both been through a lot. Maybe you've both not deceived, but triggered each other. Maybe you're both having problems trusting each other right now, but something pushes the two of you forward and keeps you connected. And, you know, it's very, that's a loud vehicle. That's a motorcycle. That's a real motorcycle. That could be relevant. Um, we see divine masculine and divine feminine energy here. We see a perfect match. Again, don't, you can be two feminines and two masculines. But yeah, that's the current energy. And while I have you here, I've been doing a forward pile. I'm just going to look up something while we have you here. All right. So first, I do see the message. And if you're religious and are scared by the number, it's not a scary number. But we have, again, I said there was a lot of sixes and sixes are about union and harmony. We have six, six, six. So I just want to bring up six, six, six. I mean, there's lots of meanings. But it, it is a call for balance. And it's interesting that we have 6-6 six, six here, like balancing of the scales. It is an alert to shift your focus in order to relieve some of the stress in your life. So, for example, if you guys are trying to have this beautiful new beginning and you're focused on the things that this person did that made you not want to trust them and they're focused on not trusting you and you're both focused on well what if this goes wrong and what if this goes wrong I feel like that's a call to shift that focus and I think it was pile two I again I have amnesia after I do readings like I cannot remember them um <laughs> it's very strange um your no it was pile one your anxiety is not reality but your anxiety can become reality if it 
you know, if you're constantly thinking, when is the other shoe going to drop? Again, huge lesson that I'm trying to learn right now. If you're always saying, well, what if this, what if this, what if this? And you're constantly thinking, well, it was like this before and it all came crashing down. Well, this person did this. What if they do it again? It can really manifest into reality. And so positive thinking and fresh start. This is a fresh start here. This is, <laughs> this is beautiful energy. And we see the balance. We see, you know, again, this could be, be about someone who didn't equally give energetically. And, you know, guys, there's lots of reasons for not being able to put energy into a connection. And that's something that I've learned through my own journey that it's our programmed thoughts that make us believe, well, if they loved us, they would do this. And if they loved us, they would talk to us all the time. But especially with soul connections, it's, it's so much more complicated than that. It's so much more complicated than that. They could be not giving because they're dealing with shadows or they have a karmic lesson to learn or they're overwhelmed by the intensity of the connection or they're afraid they're going to hurt you again. There's lots of, no, I'm not making excuses, but there's lots of reasons. And, you know, I feel in some of my darkest times, I would go onto social media and I would see like, if they're not giving you equal give and take, you kick them to the curb. And like so much, it was just so negative. Nothing about forgiveness or understanding, which is what I talk about here. Anyway. Again, I come from a place of someone who's had to forgive people and I've needed people to forgive me. So I believe in forgiveness and understanding and, you know, anyway, I just... This is very beautiful energy here. I don't know why I went on that rant. <laughs> I really don't know why. <laughs> uh, that was weird. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, we're not even into it, you guys. Jeez, we're only on the second one. What is helping or blocking this connection? I'm interested to see what comes out because I just went on a rant. What? So guys, <laughs> this is, I just laugh because I was saying, why did I go on that rant? Like, I just felt the need to go on this rant about overthinking and thinking about past hurts and it came out as what's blocking it. So I'm, anyway, I'm having a moment. <laughs> so everything I just said could be helping or could be harming this beautiful union that's happening here. I mean, I do see beautiful energy here. And there is an element of, you know, thinking about the past and thinking about past hurts and constantly, you know, opening those wounds when, to me, it's clear that you both love each other. You're both trusting in this. You're both giving your heart, it looks like. You both want balance. You want a strong foundation. And it's so interesting that I said all that because that is what that energy is. It's thinking about these cups. You're worried about these cups. You're worried about that time that this happened and the time that this happened. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to tell you how you feel. <laughs> this is what the card is saying. <laughs> and it could be, I feel like your person feels this way too. And you're both, you know, focused on these cups that have spilled and you should be focusing on the two cups, which are you guys that are still standing and wanting a new beginning. Again, those need to be spoken about and then cleared away. You know, I'm not saying to not talk about it, but this is a very cool deck. I like this deck. This is a new deck. <laughs> it's a deck that I used to see. Here I go on a rant again. It's a deck that I used to see when I was out and I would always like think about buying it, but then I wouldn't. And then I really wanted to buy it and I couldn't find it anywhere. 
Anyway, it was there the other day, so I got it and I like it. Maybe you guys like anime. Maybe your person likes anime. All right. <laughs> We're going to get into your thoughts and feelings right now. Please only take what resonates. <laughs> what are the viewers' thoughts and feelings? Pile three, what are you thinking about? Oh, look. You could be thinking about, that's interesting because, aww. <laughs> this is very intense. Pile three. Uh, so this is your energy. I feel like you see the benefit of working on this. I feel like you both see the benefit of working on this. Like I said, the Eight of Pentacles talks about choosing the harder path because you know it's worth it. And this card is about healing. And it's not the Six of Cups, but it's very interesting because we see this person healing, gaining clarity, and I really do get childhood wounding here. And I know typically it's the Six of Cups that talks about childhood wounding. But here we see this image. Past life is what I'm hearing. And if you're spiritually awakened and a divine counterpart, then you know that this connection is meant to heal you. And I feel like that you're realizing that or you're working on that. Your energy is, this is worth it. This has all been worth it. You could also be thinking, it's also a lot of hard work. Because it is. You could be thinking, this has taken forever. Like, why is this taking so long? But I feel like you're healing here. And we have the lovers again coming up in your energy. So I really do believe that... This is a very strong connection. Lots of sixes, lots of union, harmony energy. It's beautiful. And I feel like there needs, again, there needs to be trust here. There needs to be trust in this. And also something about patience. Um, because these connections really do take time. And, you know, when we rush them, I speak from experience. <laughs> when we try and rush them. It just pushes us further apart. So this is very beautiful energy. I will say we have we have the devil and the lovers together here on the bottom of the deck. I haven't gone through signs yet, but we have Gemini and Capricorn here. And, you know, when these cards come out together, it does symbolize an unbreakable bond. You guys could have had codependency in the past. You guys could have, you know, toxic traits that you healed together that you're still trying to heal together. But both of you see what this connection is. We have the lovers twice now. So clearly this is important to you. And we're about to see <laughs> how your person feels. <laughs> So yeah, we have, I'm going to keep that. No, I'm going to keep it there. Um, so we have Earth Energy, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. We have some Air Energy, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Heavy Gemini. We saw Capricorn. There's a little bit of water. All right, let's see how your person is feeling. How is your person feeling about this connection? This is beautiful. Oh my goodness. So I do feel like your person is also feeling guarded here. Your person is feeling anxious as well. It's interesting because the beginning of your reading starts off with building a foundation, building a new foundation. And for your person's energy, we do have this foundation being rebuilt. We have this tower moment. 
So this is fire ener heavy fire energy, Leo, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Um, your person is worried about this, just like I feel you are worried about this. For what's blocking it, we saw possibly remembering the past, worrying about the past. And I do feel like your person is afraid that this is all going to come crashing down again. But they want this, they want to build this stable foundation so that it doesn't come crashing down again. So that, you know, I feel like this person experienced a lot of anxiety, sleepless nights. That could be because you were and you're tugging on each other's energy. But your person is seeing happily ever after here with you. They see the potential here. They want this new foundation. Houses also represent foundation. It's interesting because there is, I feel like hesitancy on both sides a little bit. Just a little. This one's more intense. Your person's anxiety is a little bit more intense. So now we have more water, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. So we're going to start layering cards here because I ran out of room, of course. All right, now I want to see what's coming next for you two. What is coming next? What is coming next for this connection? What is coming next? my gosh, you guys. I could cry. I don't know why I love love so much, but this is what's coming next. Oh my goodness. I feel like you guys are strengthening your bond here. This is Gemini. This is more fire. And this is about success. Look at, look, those are the same people. Oh my gosh. Those are the same people. And again, there's this feeling of choosing each other and strengthening this bond, working on the foundation. And the Six of Wands is about success and victory. It's about being seen. So maybe you guys make it, you know, official. In some decks, it shows a bride and a groom on the Six of Wands. So... Lots of sixes. See? Six, 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 six. All these sixes. Union. Harmony. Oh, this is beautiful. I'm having a little moment here. Yeah, yeah, we've still got that devil peeking out. <laughs> An unbreakable bond. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't... I want to do a potential outcome, but there are so many beautiful cards out already. <laughs> Let's do potential outcome. <laughs> I mean, we have all the sixes out, I think. <gasps> Look at that. Wow. Divine masculine, anyone? <laughs> We have the Emperor, Aries energy. We have all this fire. Um, this is, it's, I love that I've been reading different interpretations because this symbolizes the Ace of Wands, depending on what card it com cards it comes out with, can represent a new chapter in a spiritual connection. <laughs> oh my gosh. And we have the Divine Masculine here. Oh my gosh, I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> um, this is a fresh new beginning with the counterpart. <laughs> oh my gosh, there's so much union in this. Oh my gosh, there's so much union energy in this uh, reading. It is, oh my gosh. <gasps> Oh my gosh. Um, what am I supposed to be doing next? I'm supposed to be getting moon cards. 
I'm like really blown away by all these sixes, all this energy. This is beautiful. You guys love each other. <laughs> this one's dripping in love. All right. Interesting. I flipped up the top two cards and we see the star and chariot. Very interesting. Okay, let's get some moon cards. What advice do you have for pile three? The end of a tough cycle approaches. Full moon in Capricorn. Start trusting you guys. Your commitment is being tested. Clearly. <laughs> I feel like you guys have been through it with this person. So clearly you've been tested. <laughs> Nothing is yet set in stone. So guys, in my comment section, somebody was saying that they get scared of some of these cards. And I wanted to mention that there's lots of meanings for these cards. So let me just look at this one. Because somebody saw nothing will come of this situation. Nothing will come of this situation. Somebody was afraid of that card. And one of the meanings of that card is surrendering to the divine. So it can just talk about, you know, if you're trying to push for a connection and you're pushing, 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 that nothing will come of it if you continue to push. Anyway, I hope that person is listening. Where is this card? Oh my gosh. So this one, I know the best that I know the best will unfold for me. That you may be slowly moving towards your goal, but that's okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Stay with it, whatever it means to you. That's a message for that card. It also talks about focusing. So there. All right. It's time to release negativity. That's that five of cups that we saw where the person's looking down at those spilled cups. Yay. <laughs> You're very close to achieving your goal. That's a lovely card. All right, let's get these ones. What can you tell me about this connection, Spirit? What does Pile 3 need to hear about this connection? Oh, whoa. I meant to take that like that. Can I get one more? Oh, <gasps> very interesting. Oh, look, we have forward movement. So first of all, pile three, this is a beautiful card to get because this can talk about a connection that's been locked away. It's been kept in a cage by the universe. It's been held back because, you know, for whatever reason, whatever you resonate, there were interferences, patterns, cycles, on and off again, however it resonates to you. Spirit was keeping this back for a reason. And we see this cage is wide open now. We can see that heart. The key is on the outside of that cage. It's interesting because this is pile three and we have three, three. I apologize if you can hear my children. <laughs> this door of with a heart opens onto a new beginning in your experience, in your romantic experience. This may be a call from a past life where it may be a new tenderness about to bloom into heartfelt affection. 
This relationship already exists in energetic potential. So when this card appears in your spread, make sure you are projecting the kind of self-loving energy that you want to receive from others. Very interesting. I do feel like, again, this was a this was a connection that really tested you here and really that three of swords energy, all that heartache, all those moments of feeling broken. So I am going to read this to you. It came out in the reverse. The broken heart reverses, reversed marks a time of renewal and hope. The pain and trauma are behind you now, and you can trust that greater joy is on the way. Whatever happened to hurt you in the past, you're free to move on. So there's that energy of not, you know, not depending on or not focusing on the past and what happened in the past and what went wrong and reliving it all. But, you know, having an honest conversation, talking about it and then moving on and focusing on the positive things, focusing on forward movement. And, you know, I always say, you guys, this card reminds me of, well, the chariot, forward movement, but it reminds me of the feminine and the masculine because the feminine moves faster than the masculine. And the masculine's catching up here. This is willingness to work. Like, you both are willing to work on this. You're both willing to try. And this card is about aggressive forward movement. So... This card indicates you are on the right track. Let's get some of these. Spirit, what advice do you have for this connection? What do we need to know? What do we need to know here, Spirit? Oh my gosh, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> what? This was on the bottom, you guys. So we have a 10. And look, this is what we saw. We saw the beginning of your reading was talking about really working on this foundation together, working on making this foundation stronger so that it can withstand any kind of interference. It can withstand any tower moment. And this card is very twin flamey. It equals eight, which, excuse me, I'm burping or whatever. Um... This is eight strength, eight strength. I really feel, I talk about how eights represent the, the disillusion of self. And I really do feel like you and this person have been through so much together that it's really made you both stronger as individuals and only strengthened your connection. It's interesting how you can't really see, for my twin flames out there, you can't really see where these owls end and where they begin. It's almost like they're joined. It's very mirrored. Oh, look, the see, I feel for me, this does look gender. I'm not talking about gender, but this looks like divine feminine, divine masculine. We had that gem energy, so nobody else compares. You both hold a key to each other's heart. And look, this person has, this one has a heart on it. And this is a huge message from spirit that you can trust in this connection. I love that. That's beautiful. All right, I believe all that's left is heart cards and charms. Oh, no, wait, I want advice. <laughs> Again, I'm sorry if you hear my children. <laughs> Advice for pile three. Advice for my beautiful pile threes. Okay, that one definitely wanted to come out. That one I was, I don't know. Oh, we have the self-love mirrored one. 
I am a playful participant in life, and I always have the option to make something a fun game rather than a heavy burden. Mary Poppins put sugar in the medicine for a reason. That lady really knows how to party. And this is, again, it's very important not to get stuck in the pattern of projecting onto each other and blaming each other and talking about the past and, you know, Yes, work through those things, but don't dwell on them. Don't five of cups energy. And this is, you know, talking about keeping it light. We have self-love. I openly embrace a feeling of self-love. I love myself because I understand myself. I love myself as the most committed partner I will ever have. I show myself love any way that I can. And when I screw up, I remember to be sweet and gentle with myself. If not, I'm going to make myself sleep on the couch. Got that self? We currently have a bunch of blue jays singing outside. As I, as I open to the abundant possibilities of my life's path, I'm reminded that I always have unlimited options. Life is a buffet and I allow myself to choose whatever makes me happiest without limiting thoughts like you can't put mac and cheese on your baked potato. Worthiness. I am worthy of the ultimate happiness. I deserve it and accept it and gosh darn it, I'm not going to feel guilty about it when I get it. Guilt is not invited to my happiness party. I won't even tell him where it is. If he asks about it, I'll be like, no, I think you're thinking of something else. And then I'll run away very quickly. All right, let's see what wants to come out for you guys with these cards. That's too many, but I'll take those ones. So we have, when it comes to matters of the heart, there is no right or wrong. Every choice you make expands your understanding of life and love. When you pass from this world, you take nothing with you, but your soul and the memories you have shared with those you love. Imagine, these are for my anxious people. Imagine all unwanted thoughts dissolving into light, creating room for new opportunities and possibilities in your life. Embrace through each other, you find the missing pieces. Trust, transformation, and that's your whole reading was centered around trust. Transformation occurs through acceptance. Once you accept the current situation, it will automatically transform. That was a very loud dirt bike. Um, it's interesting because I'm thinking about the way that the donkey was facing this way and the lovers was facing this way. Maybe you're the one having problems trusting. Sexual union, honor the place in one another where you are one eternal soul, for there you will find true bliss. Wait, don't rush into it. Allow nature to take its course. Someone has deeper feelings for you than they are letting on, like this person. Criticizing, <laughs> criticizing one another will only lead to further unhappiness. Love and accept each other as you are, and your relationship will magically transform. That's what I was saying. That's what I was saying. All right. Now, I'm going to make you suffer through me cleaning up. <laughs> Thank you again for joining me for yet another reading. You guys are so supportive and lovely. And please, I saw somebody apologizing in my comment section for talking too much. Please do not. Although I do the same thing, so really I should be saying that to myself. <laughs> I should stop apologizing for being a human. <laughs> All right, let's get your charms. All right, so letters. Sorry, I needed to stir them. We have P, A, M, Pam. Have I mentioned I'm an office fan? <laughs> Pam, 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 Pam. <laughs> X, I, D, L, J, B. Oh my gosh, J, B. Again. B, B. 
L U H. Oh, we have JJ now. H H H J J U B O and that second J. If you don't see your letters, don't worry. That doesn't, these are meant for extra confirmation. Not to frighten you. <laughs> All right, go back letters. Get out of my hand. This, look, this one doesn't want to move my hand. That could be relevant. All right, I'm gonna stir the charms. Give us some good charms. Give us some good charms, spirit. Give us some good ones. Taking them with my left hand, which I don't normally do. It feels funny. It feels really funny. I'm gonna take a few more. All right, let's see what we have. We have an elephant, an apple. Someone could be a teacher or a health nut. We have Saturn. We have this J again. <laughs> this J haunts me. <laughs> It's always here, JJ, JB, and J, always here. <laughs> uh, musical notes, music could be important. We have a bike, bike could be important. Look, we have the twin flame and the soulmate swans, beautiful. We have a turtle, a mermaid, a star, divine feminine, we have a moon. The bunny playing tennis. This bunny also haunts me. <laughs> we have an angel. Your angels are watching over you. Look at all these keys. So lots of lots of those love cages being unlocked by spirit. Look at all those. We have a dragonfly, Cupid, romance, wheel of fortune. This rose has been coming out a lot, you guys, a lot. We have another angel. We have chariot energy with the horse. We have a wing. <gasps> we have two elephants. Look. Look at the lovers. Uh, we have a starfish, a fork, a four leaf clover, a sled. This kitty also haunts me. Scotty dog. We have a fairy. Look, divine feminine, soulmate, twin flame, swan. Interesting, we also have a Pegasus, so I'm seeing that transcending card, transcending into a higher level of commitment, maybe. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna leave it there, pile three, and thank you again for joining me. Thank you for watching my ads, and thank you to all of those who book personal readings. And as always, I'm sending you guys so much light and love. I just, I appreciate you all so much and I just want the best for you. And yeah, thank you for being a part of my life and see you next time. Bye.